the wisdom of brother Paul was wisdom in salvation the entire writings of brother Paul all the epistles of Paul which is actually about 75% if not 80% of the New Testament is salvation the long suffering of our God is salvation even as our beloved brother Paul according to the wisdom given to him meaning that the wisdom given to brother Paul was the wisdom of salvation no wonder when Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse number 15 read for me and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus so Paul told Timothy that the entire scriptures are able to make thee wise wise unto salvation so you see salvation is the crux of the matter like I said last Sunday before you define a denomination, you must first of all find out what do they understand about salvation. It is the understanding of salvation that defines a church, a ministry, or a denomination. When a denomination has not understood salvation, that denomination self doesn't even know why it is, it is gathering. Because the crux of the matter is salvation. And I'm not talking about altar call. Salvation is bigger than altar call. That's the entire subject of scripture. Remember, it says the Holy Scriptures which are able, the entire Scriptures, meaning Genesis to Malachi. Because we know that Genesis to Malachi is a Scripture, or the Old Testament, or Jesus conceived. And it says, Genesis to Malachi is able to make you wise unto salvation. That's the entire mission of the whole Bible. The writings of Paul, salvation. Genesis to Malachi, salvation. The whole Bible, salvation. That's the crux of the matter. So a believer that does not understand salvation doesn't even know why he's called a believer. And it is very possible that he's not a believer. It's very possible he's not a believer. He's just wearing a title that is not validated. Because salvation is very clear. Read for me Luke chapter 4 verse number 6. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. To whomsoever I will, I give it. Now that was not a lie. That was not a lie. And Satan was not trying to say what was not true. That was true. Satan became the God of this world by Adam's transgression. Adam transgressed and handed over to Satan the authority and dominion that was given to him in the beginning. That's why Satan now said to Jesus, for it was delivered unto me. That means I am in possession of it. And whosoever I will, I will give it. Brother Paul acknowledged that when he was teaching in the epistles, he gave us that information. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4, he says, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not. The God of this world. So Satan became the God of this world by the transgression of Adam. Adam's transgression made Satan the God of this world. Now, the transgression of Adam was to hand over the world to Satan by obedience. He handed over the world to Satan by obedience. He obeyed Satan. And that act of obedience between Adam and Lucifer made Lucifer Satan made Lucifer Satan the God of this world and made Adam a sinner or made Adam dead remember the day you eat of it you shall surely die death there is not extinction death there is separation because even after he died he was still moving he was still walking around so it wasn't extinction it was separation that was the death he was separated from God and connected to Satan so Satan became his God or Satan became his Lord that's the fall that's the fall and then Satan actually took dominion over everything including including the angels in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 8 now we see it clearly put by the writer of Hebrews Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet 
talking about man so that you know it's man we're dealing with let's get back to context verse 6 but one in a certain place testified saying what is man that thou art mindful of him or the son of man that thou visitest him 7 thou madest him a little lower than the angels thou crownedst him with glory and honor and did set him over the works of thy hands 8 thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all in subjection under him he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under but him. But now we see not yet all things under his feet. Why don't we see all things under his feet? Because he handed over to Satan. He handed over to Satan. So even though he was supposed to be in charge, we do not see man in charge. Why? He handed over to Satan and Satan bragged about it. He said to Jesus, it was delivered to me and whomsoever I want, I give it to. Now, if Satan was lying, it wouldn't be a temptation. The reason why it is a temptation is because what Satan was saying was not a lie. It was true. And that is what Jesus wanted. Jesus wanted to get the, the world back. He wanted to get all of man back to God. That was a mission. And Satan said, I have them in my hand. And I will give it to anybody. And if you want man, bow down and worship. That's temptation. Because it was true. Adam committed treason. And gave to Satan. By obedience. He obeyed Satan. Hallelujah. So Satan qualified to be the God of this world by transgression, by the transgression of Adam. Now the next question I want to ask is, when was hell created? If God never intended for man to go to hell, and God didn't create Satan, and God didn't create sin, then when was hellfire created? Well, hell was created when time began. Hell was not there before time. Because there was nothing before time. It was toho ho ho Nothing, nothing. So it was with time when creation took place and God gave Adam a choice. With that choice came both the blessing and the consequences of disobeying the choice. That's where hell was created. So hell was created in time. Just like man was created in time. Just like angels were created in time. But of course we establish that God has been before time. He created time. Matthew 25, 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels so everlasting fire was prepared for the devil and his angels where did we see the devil and his angels when adam committed treason it was the transgression of adam that turned lucifer to satan and the angels that followed lucifer became demons so at that point hell was prepared for satan and his angels are we together Hell was not prepared for man. It was prepared for Satan and his angels. The only man that will accompany Satan and his angels to hell is the man who rejects the gospel of Christ. Because a man that rejects the gospel of Christ has joined affinity with the devil. Therefore, where his master is, there he shall be also. Those angels were no more God's angels. They became demons. In Jude verse 6, read for me. And the angels which kept not their first estate. So the angels kept not their first estate. What was their first estate? Angels. What was their assignment in their first estate? Ministering spirits sent forth to minister for man. So in what way did they leave their first estate? When they left their place of receiving instruction from man, of receiving direction from man to serve and began to give instructions. That act was them living their first estate. They left their original place 
and assume a place that was not theirs. All right, read on for me. The angels who left their first estate, but left their own habitation, yes, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. They are chained, they are changed and kept unto the great day. The fall of man, therefore, is the rise of the devil. The fall of man is the rise of the devil. The rise of the devil is the fall of Lucifer. The fall of man is the rise of the devil. The rise of the devil is the fall of Lucifer. So, the falling state of man happens simultaneously with the fall of man. Okay? The fall of man is the rise of the devil. The rise of the devil is the fall of Lucifer. There are no hidden mysteries. That's exactly what happened. The fall of man produced the devil. The manifestation of Satan was the fall of Lucifer. It's as easy as that. There are no, there are no complications. It's very straightforward. Amen. So there in the garden, he deceived Eve and Adam transgressed. Why is it called transgression? It is called transgression because Adam took the authority that God gave him and cheaply handed it over. In fact, Pastor Bray, you know, the, the amazing thing here is that Lucifer and Adam didn't fight. It's not as if Lucifer engaged Adam in a fight and collected the authority. That's why it's transgression. It was just cheap. voice of his word. Their job is not to give instructions. Their job is to do his commandments. Their job is to hack him. That was their job. To minister to man. To minister for ends of salvation. To hack him. And to do his commandments. But they left their estate. See? They left their estate. 
Praise the Lord, he is angels. That's why people who worship angels are just, they are just a bunch of illiterates. Angels are servants. Angels are not supposed to be worshipped. Angels are supposed to worship the sun because the sun is a man. Angels were created for man. Somebody shout hallelujah. So Satan never existed before time began. But God before time. Satan after time. Man began with time. So listen. God before time. Man with time. Satan after time. Meaning that man is older than Satan. Man was before Satan. of the world in God it was not an event that was the plan in God for the salvation of man do you understand because the actual manifestation of that plan in God took effect 2000 years ago so it was in God that the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world Meaning that the death of Jesus was not an afterthought. It was the plan. That is to say, redemption, salvation was going to come to man through the sacrifice of Christ. So it was already in the plan. It was not like God said, oh, man has fallen. Let me say, I can remedy man. No, it was already in God's plan, in God's thought before the world began. Why? Because of God's foreknowledge. So Adam's transgression led to the dominion of Satan. That dominion belongs to man. So in Genesis 1.26, we see a bestowal of authority. God says, let make man. Let them have dominion. A bestowal of authority on man. In Genesis 3 verse 6 to 7, we see a transfer of authority. A transfer of authority. Then in Colossians chapter 2 verse 14, there is a stripping of that authority. Colossians 2 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Which was contrary to us. He took it out of the way. He didn't keep it by the side. He took it out. Next verse. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. He made a show of them openly. Okay? Now follow. Satan began to rule and reign in humanity by sin. Satan began to rule and reign in humanity by sin. Satan began to rule and reign in humanity by sin. So the question will be, what is sin? Sin is disobedience. Sin is disobedience. Satan reigned. Things didn't go according to God's plan until Jesus came. So, by the obedience of one, Jesus in whom there was no guile. Jesus didn't do anything contrary to the Father. He went about saying, I can of myself do nothing. What I see my Father do, that I do. I cannot go against the wish of my Father. But Adam, Adam, 
acted out of God's plan. That's why it's called disobedience. That's why it is called transgression. That's why the second Adam, who was equally a man, fulfilled what the first Adam failed to fulfill. He obeyed. That is why by one man's disobedience, then you now see by one man's obedience, I can of myself do nothing. What I see my father do, that I do. If I see my father heal, I heal. If I see my father raise the dead, I raise the dead. My father never kills, I don't kill. So somebody says, what about pastors that pray for people to die and they die? They are in cooperation with Satan. Clean and direct, even if they are watching. Do you realize that even when there was an accidental discharge, you know accidental discharge, you know when you have a gun, they have what they call accidental discharge. When mistakenly the bullet is released, when there was accidental discharge, Jesus fixed it. You know what the accidental discharge was? When Peter, yap, chop up the ear of somebody, just wait, 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 wait. My father doesn't remove people's ears. Boop, he put it back to correct the record. That we are not here to tamper with human health. We are here to restore health. My father does not kill. So when a man prays for people to die and that die, you know who is answering his prayer? For the thief commit not to kill, examine. So when you and Satan form a coalition, is that the right English? Form what? A coalition. Okay, so two of you are an agency in killing, stealing, and destroying. He said, I know myself, don't try me. I'm a man of God. I'm anointed with oil. If you try me, you'll die in the afternoon. No, that is not the way the Father functions. He said, but I am come that you may have what? That you may have life and that you may have it how? Abundantly. That's what my Father does. That's what I do. My Father will heal the sick. I heal the sick. My father will raise the dead. I raise the dead. My father will cleanse the lepers. I cleanse the lepers. My father will forgive sinners. I forgive sinners. I can of myself do nothing. What I see my father do, that I do. Why? Because Jesus is the father manifest. Jesus is the father manifest. How do we know that? He said, I am my father. I want meaning. I am the physical expression of the father. So when you see me physically in operation, exactly what you see is exactly what the father is operating like. What about churches where they pray for people to fall and die? It's an agency of Satan. Because the father doesn't want anybody to perish, but that all native doctor, witches and wizards, evil people, that all, didn't he say, I have no delight in the death of the wicked? So why should a pastor be praying for people to die when he should be getting people saved? That reveals who the pastor is working. Whatever you are working for, you must do what he does. I can of myself do nothing. What I see my boss does, I do. Teaching good? So Jesus is the Father manifest. Or Jesus is God who became a man. Or Jesus is God in human flesh. So that humanity will know how to relate with God. So, Jesus was God that became a man. How do we prove that? Jesus slept. God does not sleep. He that watcheth over Israel does not sleep nor slumber. So for Jesus to sleep means Jesus was a man. He 
he ate. God doesn't eat. God said, if I want food, I will not come to you. But Jesus ate our food. Jesus was tired. Why? He's a man. Jesus was tempted. Why? He was man. Jesus suffered. Why? He was a man. a man so Jesus is God who became what a man 100% man and because he was a man he could have disobeyed the father it wasn't automatic that he would obey the father so it's not as if it was pre-planned for Jesus to obey the father no nothing like that everything happened in real time everything happened in real time that is what what Jesus did is called obedience he obeyed Adam disobeyed Jesus was like Adam first Adam second Adam Jesus could have chosen to disobey the father after all in the garden of Gethsemane it almost got there father I don't want the cup because he's a free moral agent. I don't want the cup. Why? He has a will. He has a choice. Father, I let this cup pass. I don't want it. That's his will. Okay? Nevertheless. So now, even though he has the freedom to do what he wants, he brought his will in subjection to God's will. It is called obedience. Now, that alignment, that alignment is what made salvation available. He said, not as I will. That is, this is not what I want. But, I submit to your will. So, it was not like Jesus was just acting. It wasn't acting. It was real. It was real. That's why nobody should make caricature of your salvation. Look, salvation is free, but it's expensive. It costs somebody. That you are not feeling it doesn't mean it's not real. It's real. That's the reality of redemption. First Adam, second Adam, last Adam first Adam second Adam last Adam now what is first Adam what is second Adam what is last Adam they are not the same so what is first Adam first Adam is Adam the progenitor of the human race what is second Adam second Adam is Jesus the incarnate Christ what is last Adam? The last Adam is Jesus, the Prototokos. The Prototokos or the prototype. The firstborn. The progenitor of the sons. We are not sons after the manner of the second Adam. None of us is incarnate. Only Jesus is incarnate. But there was need for the second Adam if there will be a last Adam. Meaning that the last Adam is all of us. We are the last Adam. After us, there is no other Adam. We are the best of God's best. The best of God's best. That's who we are. We are God's choices. Choices. Prized possession. Choices. Prized possession. We are not just uh, we are not just born again. It is deeper than just born again. We are the amalgamation of immortality. Immortality. 
We are the marriage of deity in humanity. Are you here? We are the union of God and man in a body called human body. So when you move, people are looking at you. They think it's a human being. No. No. That is why it is a mystery that a man is housing God. And that when he moves, everything that makes God, God moves on his inside. Shato labayana, zibara kotana, mando laborokote, reke deke bashoka, libara koteneke. What cannot operate inside God, I command it to expire inside you. Mento latana, sha sho 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 sho. Somebody shout, I have immortality in my mortality. It's a mystery that man houses eternal life. You know what eternal life is? Eternal life is God. That word eternal life is God. It's another name for God. First oh, John 5.20 and we know that the Son of God is come. Say we know. Touch your neighbor's in knowledge. Say to your neighbor, the kingdom thrives on knowledge, not feelings. So ignorance is your own dream in this kingdom. And we know. And we know. Not we think. And we know. Not we feel. and peace be multiplied through the knowledge we know that the communication of your faith may be effectual through the acknowledging the epignosis that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may not keep an angle there There is zero tolerance in the kingdom for illiteracy. Zero tolerance. Zero tolerance. That is, it cannot be accommodated. God is a God of knowledge. Imitate your father. We know. We know. That the son of God is come. So now we know that the Son of God is come. And the next thing he did as he came is to give us an understanding. Read on. That we may know him that is true. That we may know him. Not that we may know about him. That we may know him. Not about him. There must be a battle now. You and Jesus must see face to face. This is not CRK. And we know him. Not that we know about him. We know him that is true. Who is true? John 17, 3. We will come back to first John. And this is life eternal. Yes. That they might know thee, the only true God. The only true God. And we know him that is true. Who is he that is true? He is the only true God. Now, who is the only true God? Read on. And Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Which is Jesus Christ? The only true God is Jesus Christ. If you don't know Jesus, you don't know the only true God. Outside Jesus, there is no God. The only, not one of the true gods. The, the only true God, which is Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Who is the only true God? Jesus Christ. So get back to 1 John 5.20. 
read for me the true God and has given us an understanding yes. that we may know him that is true. That is true. And we are in him that is true. Command to Leander. We are in him that is true. So we don't come to his presence. We carry his presence because we are in him. We don't seek his presence. We live in his presence. Why? We are in him. What cannot fight him cannot fight us. Why? We are Am I teaching here? Okay. We are in him that is true. Read on. Even in his son Jesus Christ. Now, that him that is true his name is Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? This is the true God. Jesus Christ is the true God. What is another name for Jesus Christ? Exactly. So when you have eternal life, what do you have? Jesus Christ. When you have Jesus Christ, what do you have? The only true God. Do you have eternal life? What do you have? Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? So, can God be sick? Can God be poor? Can God be frustrated? Whatever does not look like God in your life, I command it to be flushed out. Flush out. Flush out. Flush out. Flush out. Whatever is responsible for those swollen legs, I command it to be corrected. Legs be normal. Everything swollen. Swollen heart. Swollen liver. Swollen kidneys. Fibroids. Tumors. As your amen is coming like thunder, I command it to melt out. Melt, 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 melt. Lift your hands. Say, I have immortality in my mortality. Say, I house eternal life. I cannot be sick. Please sit down. Receive manifestation. Receive manifestation. Say, I house the only true God, Jesus Christ, eternal life. I am unbeatable. Jesus is God who became a man to save man. See that? Let's push a bit. Adam was the image of God. He was God on the earth. He had dominion. Genesis 1 26 tells us that after the loss of that dominion dominion never came back to man again until Jesus came Genesis 1 26 to 28 God created man in his image in his likeness bless them and said be fruitful multiply replenish subdue the earth and have dominion male and female created he them Psalms chapter 8 verse 4 Psalm began to interrogate Genesis What is man that thou art mindful of him And the son of man that thou visitest him What is man Why are you mindful of man There's something about man David was trying to figure out What is man 
Hebrews chapter 2 now gives us an answer. Verse 6 where we read. We're going to read it again. But one in a certain place testified saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? Seven. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crowned him with glory and honor. And did set him over the works of thy hands. Now wait. Damian Kosa. What is man that thou art mindful of him was an interrogation from a prophet. A prophet knew that the man we are talking about there could not be Adam. Because Adam is supposed to have everything in subjection. But when he looks at Adam, everything is not in subjection. Meaning, this man has not yet come. Philippians chapter 2, we shall come back to Hebrews. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 6. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Go back to that verse 6 and give me the Amplified of Philippians chapter 2. Who, although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, possessing the fullness of the attributes which make God God, did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained. Yes. But stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity, so as to assume the guise of a servant slave, in that he became like men and was born a human being. Now hold it. He became like man. He removed, he removed like a cloth that thing that makes him God. same person if you can't understand that God will have to help you <laughs> give me my suit <laughs> let me explain <laughs> when I say God will have to help you God says that's why you are here help them <laughs> so that's why I'm going to do what I'm going to do now <laughs> because God says you help you this is God light be Created man. Bam. God. No son, no Holy Ghost. All of son, Holy Ghost in one. God. There's no need for Holy Ghost. No need for son. So he's God. God in charge. Then man fell. With the fall of man. Man has to buy man back. No man can buy man. God loves man and must save man. Nothing on earth could afford it. Clement come. So God said, As God, I have decided. He removed God and kept God. He took on man, the same person. So God is sitting there as God and God is wearing man. So he is both God and man in one. But he needed man to save man. And he needed God to still be in charge. So as God is in charge but to save man he becomes man. It's called incarnation. That's why even Mary cannot explain how she got pregnant. Because it's beyond humanity. It's beyond humanity. The pregnancy of Mary was a miracle. That's the only language that can explain it to you right now. The only way we can say it was that Mary, Mary became pregnant by a miracle. Finish. 
because it was God wearing man so that as man he will go through the path that man needs to go through and pay the price that man needs to pay so that he can restore man to where man ought to be where, where all things are subject to man am I teaching? Okay, read for me Hebrews where we are chapter 2 verse 8 thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet including angels all, all things have been put under man for in that he put all in subjection under him he left nothing that is not put under him. Yes. But now we see not yet all things put we under him. We do not him. see all things put under him. Why? Man sinned. What was the plan? Let them have dominion. But that dominion cannot be seen. Why? Transgression. So since we don't see that dominion, what do we do? We look up and what do we see? We see Jesus. Who is Jesus? The man. Which man? The man that will put man back in Genesis 1.26. You see Jesus. We see Jesus. Who is Jesus? The man. Which man? The man I told let them have. that man that was told let them have in that man is male and female and who is that man we see Jesus we see Jesus give me verse 10 of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10 for it became him for whom are all things yes and by whom are all things yes. in bringing many sons unto glory yes. to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering he was made perfect through sufferings, you know what that means he obeyed the father to the later the same place where Adam lost it Jesus passed he obeyed in every situation he obeyed, that is why it is called suffering he, he, he put himself in a straight jacket and followed all instruction went through all temptations without falling for none he became perfect through suffering that is he passed by being tempted okay read verse 11 for both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. So Jesus, the man, obeyed. And in his obedience, all men obeyed. So he is a sanctifier. We are the sanctified. But he the sanctifier and we the sanctified are one so that separation that Adam brought Jesus closed back for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren Jesus the man Read verse 12 to 15 for me. Say, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold I and the children which God hath given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. He has destroyed him and has delivered. He has delivered them who through fear of death were subject to death all their lifetime. He will not deliver. He has 
delivered. I am putting the dead. For those of you that are going through six months of deliverance, is fraud. Anybody putting you in six months of deliverance is fraudulent. Is fraudulent. I don't care who he is. And I don't care the dreams you are having. Who don't dream? for so scripture which is superior to your feelings and dreams says who hath delivered them <laughs> who hath delivered them? us from the kingdom of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have a redemption through his blood even the forgiveness so what is deliverance the forgiveness of sin what is deliverance the forgiveness of sins what is deliverance the forgiveness of sins how do you receive the forgiveness of sins through preaching acts 10 38 read for me how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Alright, Acts 13, 38 Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. What is preached unto you? So what is forgiveness of sins? Deliverance. How is it given to people? By preaching, not praying. There's nothing like prayer of deliverance. There is only preaching of deliverance. Because when deliverance is preached, it produces faith. When your faith connects with what Christ has done, you are born again. Born again. for a long time is done once instant. Some say, no, uh, Dr. Damina, you don't understand. There are demons that come to my room every night. You don't need deliverance. You need casting out 
of devils. Those are two different things. There is a difference between deliverance and casting out devils. I've casted out many demons in my life. Many. I can't number. I started casting out demons. 83 till now. So you can imagine. You can imagine. I terrorize demons so much at a particular time in my life that I will just enter a place. People will start shouting, have you come to torment us? Have you? I have not said anything. They were on that screen. Don't tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. Because I know what I'm talking about. Demons are cast out. But you see the difference is, demons can be cast out of a man. And the man is still not born again. Okay. Are you here? So that demons left a man doesn't automatically mean he's born again. But when you are delivered, you're born again not be delivered and you're not born again. But demons can be cast out of you and you're not born again. That's why Jesus said when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, meaning when they cast out demons from a man, he said the demon will go to dry places looking for a place of rest. Looking for rest. Just like there remained a rest for the people of God. Unclean spirits who are looking for rest. <laughs> and he said as the demon is moving, it findeth none. Then it says, I will go back to my house. Look at, look at the, look at the insult. Look at the insult. I will go. When did he build the house? How much did he invest to buy the house? I will go back to my house. Then he now comes to check. And the man is empty and clean. Meaning from the time the demon was cast out, nobody gave him the message of Christ. So faith has not entered him. That means you can, demons can be cast out of you and you are still not born again. So since the man is empty, no occupant, he now says, I know the capacity of my former house. Demons, come. I need seven free demons that have no accommodation. We have just secured a house and it has eight bedrooms. Then all of them will come. Shh, they will enter the man, eight of them. And the state of that man will be worse than before. Why? Because that man, demons were cast out of him, but he was not delivered. If the man was delivered, they will not come back. Because Ajabadoka, eternal life will have occupied the man. That's why many churches, why they do all this so called deliverance, the people never are free. They, they are. Their deliverance is on the go. You know why? The more they are doing the deliverance, the more they are putting more demons in. The more they are talking to you about your situation and introducing you to different demons, the more those demons are accessing you. So how can you be free? That's why every time there is a deliverance service, you are the only candidate. In every service, you are the only candidate. Before they even start raising, yeah, 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 yeah. you are the only one. You have become a victim. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Kaya! Leave that thing. Leave, leave that leave. leave that thing. Nobody will use you to kill that. You are in many looking for hell. Say, I am free because Jesus lives in me. He is the Son. He has set me free. I am free indeed. I didn't hear your amen. The gospel is preached. Forgiveness of sins is preached. What is preaching? Your sins are forgiven. How? By the death, the burial, 
the resurrection. How? The death was my death. The burial was my burial. The resurrection is my resurrection. That identification enforces the reality of the finished work in the heart of a man. Listen carefully. Let me round up. Are you blessed? Let me round up this house. The fall of Adam was a legal issue. It's not a sentimental issue. The fall of Adam it was a legal issue. So you can't cry and be free from sin. You didn't hear me. There's no amount of cry you will cry and be free from sin. It's not a sentimental issue. Neither is it an emotional issue. Is a legal matter. <laughs> Have you ever seen anybody go to the court of law where he's convicted as a criminal and he cried and the judge changed the sentence? Have you ever seen? No, it's a question. Have you ever seen? Okay, if you think it will work, go and steal this afternoon. I give you permission. And steal in a way you will be arrested. Let them take you to Ibawa barracks for one night and, and, and let them charge you to court. We will all come on that day to that court. We will join you to cry. Let's see the judgment the judge will give. There is no sentiment in legal issues. In legal issues, only facts and evidences suffices. Leave that thing. You think because you are crying, oh, 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 you think that's why God is forgiving you? for Jesus will be in the hottest part of hell. Where the fire is coming out from, that's where they will drop you. If not for Jesus. Leave that in. Thank God for Jesus. Not crying? What is crying? Romans 6.23 Let's look at it. Let's look at doctrine. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. What is the salary of sin? It's a legal matter. If you work for an office and it's time to pay you salary and they don't pay you, is it right? You can sue them. You can sue them because your salary is your salary. When you commit sin, it is legal for you to be paid. You must be paid. You, no, 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 no. You must be paid. If you don't come for the salary, the salary will come to you. You, 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 it's a legal matter. When you sin, you must be paid. What is your salary? Debt. There is no two ways about it. Somebody say, I sin and I confess. How can confessing pay for debt? Those of you that think just by confessing, God will forgive me because I confess. Father, I'm sorry. Forgive my sins. I have just done it again. It is number 55. I am sorry. Then God said, okay, don't worry. We are cleaning it now with the blood. It's a lie. It doesn't work like that. This is a legal matter. This is what? The only way you will be settled after sinning is what? Dead. Take it. There are no two ways that you can't break the scripture. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Delana, what is eternal life? Who is eternal life? Who is Jesus? And what is that? It's a gift. Do you work for a gift? Or do you work for wages? Do you work for a gift? Do you work for wages? You work for wages. So all this working you've been working, the wages of it is what? Is debt. But then God said, hey, this one you didn't work for. Yeah. This one you didn't work for. That is good for you. Take it free. Much more. <laughs> Am I preaching good here? Much more. They which receive the abundance of grace. Which is the gift of righteousness? What shall happen to them? They reign in life. Somebody shout much more. Aye. Now, sit down. Let's settle the matter. I'm closing. Just sit down. Let's settle. Can we settle this matter? So, every all have, all have, and the wages of sin for all. So, everybody is, has, has received their salary.
So they laughed. sin and by implication to put away the wages by crying how by what why does he why can't he just wish it away why can't he just confess it away why can't Jesus say okay okay a man we have sinned against your God we have sinned we are sorry we are sorry take away the cup we are sorry God say okay you have confessed no problem you can now go why it's a legal matter and in legality you must pay the price you must the best any court of jurisdiction can do for you is to reduce the sentence. That's the best they can do for you. But if it is serving you, know, you will serve it. Except you have a lawyer who understands the loophole of the law and has been able to to equip himself with sound fact. Now a lawyer can free you from an offense and the judge will release you if the lawyer knows his onions. Otherwise, you are done for. Even the lawyer is not going to free you from it by sentiment. It will be by hard facts by sound argument what kind of argument sound argument very sound argument it's a legal matter redemption that's why you don't come and tell them I'm sorry <laughs> no calm down let's teach you the legality of redemption so you save your tears for better things Save your tears for better things. See, I hear, I hear. I know so many of you are here. This in First John one nine. Leave that thing. Just stay in this thirty days. You will understand. Now, read for me the next verse. And as it is appointed, it's an men. appointment unto men. How many times? Once to die. To do what? To die. After this, why judgment? Why dead? Because the wages of sin? Good. So, and every man must keep that appointment. Why? Because all have sinned. It's not begging. So, where does your freedom come legally into this matter? Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. But we see Jesus. Egebodaga. Who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. For the suffering... Where he became lower than the angels is where he had to suffer for death. Why does he have to suffer for death? All have and the wages of sin and he came on your therefore your death is his death. Okay? For the suffering of death and what is the next thing that followed that? Crowned with glory and honor okay, that he by the grace of God that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man should do what? So who did Jesus die for? For everybody. So what is the grounds for you to be free from sin? That you cried? What? So the death of Jesus was your freedom from sin. So the next time Satan says you are a sinner, tell him idiot. Have you forgotten what happened 2,000 years ago? I died in Christ and I rose again. Get out of my face. Who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. That's why based on that, forgiveness is preached. Based on that, we now preach forgiveness. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. Why? The price has been paid in full. 
your feet, walk to four, five people, tell them I'm totally forgiven. Completely forgiven. Eternally forgiven. Forgiven how? Is there anybody officially forgiven here? How long are you forgiven for? No, wait, 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 wait. How long are you forgiven for? Are you sure? Forever. Forever. What about your past mistakes? Huh? Are they also forgiven? Why are they forgiven? Because the death of Jesus was backdated. You're not hearing me. Jesus died 2,000 years ago. But in that death, the price he paid was, was carried from Adam. Every sin from Adam, all was carried through Abraham, Isaac, all the sins of the Old Testament people. It was dumped on Christ. So he carried the sins of the transgressions of the past on his head. Then he now took the sin of the present. Forgive them. They know not what they are doing. Okay? Then God now zoomed into the future. Because it was one death. It was one death and for all. So God zoomed into the future in his foreknowledge. And calculated what every man was capable of committing. Then multiplied it. He went ahead of time. Covered your children, your children's 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 children until the end of the age. Then he carried that, brought it back on Christ. So he carried the sins of the past, the sins of the present, the sins of the future on his head. That is why it was by that one death. By that one death. That is why that death, he died, died. He didn't die. He died. He died, die. Die, die. Now when he rose, the forgiveness was for the transgressions of the past, the present, and that is why anybody who believes the gospel is saved because it covers for the future. As you stand right now, God is smiling. He looks at you and is happy that his dream from the beginning of time has been fulfilled in you. The last Adam. Where is the last Adam? Where is the last Adam? Lift your right hand and shout, I am forgiven. Completely forgiven by his death, his burial, his resurrection. I stand saved, sanctified, eternally. I do not have any doubt in approaching God. God is my father. He lives in me. I live in him. Now throw your two hands up to heaven freely. Shout, Abba Father. Abba, father. No, some of you didn't do it like children that belong to their father. Throw your hands up. All right? Shout, Abba Father. Abba, father. Thank you. You live in me. I live in you. We cannot be separated. What cannot fight you? cannot fight me. You cannot fail. I cannot fail. You cannot be sick. I cannot be sick. You have justified me. I am forever justified. If there's somebody like that, let your clap and shout. Celebrate your redemption. Celebrate your redemption. Celebrate your redemption. Celebrate the forgiveness of sins. Celebrate the nature of God in you.